Hello listeners and welcome back to another episode of the Beautiful Game podcast. I'm with my main man Dej, what are you saying brother? Yeah I'm good, looking forward to today. This is one of the top players, top young players in the Premier League so it's going to be good to speak to him about his career and like the ongoings at his football club. So yeah, looking forward to it. Yeah, I'm very, very excited to introduce Harvey Barnes to the platform. Thank you for coming on. No worries, thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. Yeah, so Harvey, we just wanted to kick it off. Um, what's the current situation at Leicester in terms of the COVID situation? We've seen games get cancelled, trainings had to get cancelled as well. So like, how are you find it, finding it, you know, coping with this situation? Yeah, it's, I think it's it's been a weird one recently. Um, you know, I think we we're one of the sort of the first teams to get hit by it. And, you know, we had sort of, I think, 10, 11 players out at one time. And then, like you say, games getting cancelled. We had to shut the training ground. Uh, um, I think it was just everything was so up in the air. You couldn't properly prepare for any games or anything. It, it's been a tough little period. Um, and especially with it coming over Christmas, uh, you've got so many games fixture list is is crazy um so i think we've, we've coped with it well we've had some good results in that in that period and then now obviously we've still had a few cases we've got a few lads at, at the afcon um but we're doing all right we're we're sticking together we're, we're, we're cracking on and what are your thoughts towards um player welfare because i actually asked isaac hayden who's that you know I would say the bottom end of the Premier League, and he said, "Listen, he's he's okay with it. He feels like the player welfare in the Premier League is good." But we saw, you know, comments from Jordan Henderson saying that there's no independent body that looks after the players. So, what's what's your thoughts towards player welfare in the Premier League? Yeah, I, I think it's difficult because you're always going to have a sort of a mix of opinions. Um, some players will be more than happy to go and play every minute of every game as long as they're. They're fit. That's probably sort of how I look, how I look at it. As long as I'm fit and I feel healthy, then I want to play play every game. Um, but then you you also got to understand that there's some players that won't be able to cope with that or will need a little break here and there. Um, I think it's hard to sort of generalise that across the whole league. That's probably more each team's got to look at that or each manager's got to look at that for individual players and. And sort of each person's different situation. No, that makes sense. So, like moving on to Leicester City as a team, um, this season, how would you assess it from like a performance standpoint and from a league table standpoint? I think for for us, it's probably been sort of over the last few years one of our most difficult periods. Um, I think over the last two seasons, we've you know as a team, we've been performing so well. Um, we've been right up there with you know the best in the league, and yeah, you know, we missed out on the Champions League spots twice. But you know, apart from that, we've been competing you know the whole time. And then I think this year's probably been our first little spell where we've been up and down. Results haven't been going for us. Um, so in the, in them times, it's tough to sort of just put your finger on exactly what's going wrong. If it was that easy, you'd fix it straight away. Um, <laughs> So, no, it's it's been good to sort of see all the lads come together and, and fixing the problems with, obviously, with the gaffer. And, you know, I think now we're looking like we're, we're, we're coming a lot stronger and hopefully, you know, second half of the season, um, we'll sort of finish how we have done the last two seasons. And, like, what's been, like, the mental challenge? Because as, like, armchair fans that just watch the game from our home, we see that Leicester miss out on the top four on the last day of the season. But how difficult has it been like mentally to recover back to back? Yeah, it, it is tough. It is tough. Um, when you have, you know, such a such a successful season up until that point and then, you know, the final hurdle you, you miss out, it's, it's so disappointing. You know, all the lads were gutted and then you sort of go into the second season and you're in the same situation and you're thinking, you know, this can't happen. Like we can't let it happen again. And you know, we had some sort of bad fortune last season. We had a lot of lot of injuries, and you know, for us to, to miss out again, it was it was tough. It, um, it was really tough. But then you've got to look at sort of the positives for us. We we still had the Europa League. We were still playing in Europe. We still had all these good opportunities. Um, so I think for us, it, like I said, it, it, it's a disappointment. But you've got to, you've got to get over that for the. For the season that's coming up, you know you can't dwell on it. Otherwise, it's going to impact your form as a team. 
Yeah, so how would you sort of view Leicester as a football club? Because due to general consensus, most people think, you know, it's Man City, Chelsea, Liverpool, then it's sort of like an open shop. So where would you sort of place Leicester in that pool of football clubs? Yeah, I think sort of over the last few seasons, you know, sort of in the last five, six years, as, as a club, we've achieved a lot. Um, we've made some great strides. Of course, we won the Premier League. Um, we've been in Europe. Um, we won the FA Cup, Community Shield. We, we've had some some great moments as a club. Um, but like you say, I think there's always that sort of view that that is the the top part, what the top four of the table. Which I think you know you, you look at it this year, especially the, the sort of the strength that them them squads have and. The way that they're playing consistently year on year is it sort of shows why they are right at the top every year. Um, but I think as a club, we know that, you know, we're getting there. We're, we're trying to push them them clubs as much as we can. And we've shown that we can do that when, when we're at our best. So there's a lot of challenges for us, but it's good to keep pushing. I just want to touch on your manager, Brendan Rodgers. Um, we've had him on the platform. Great guy. And everyone we've spoken to within the game of football and I'm sure Dej can back me up here has had positive words to say about your manager how important is he for the young players especially how's he been with you yeah he's been great I think you know since he's come in um not just myself but there's been a lot of young players who have come into the side and had their chance and sort of you see how they've developed as well um and then, for, obviously, for myself, I think he's brought my game on a lot. Um, tactically, he's very good. And, you know, as a young player, you, of course, you know, a lot of young players in the league have the ability, but it's sort of the, the tactical side of the game which sometimes they have to develop. And I think uh, I think Brendan's been really good here with the, the players and myself where, you know, the, the parts of the game that we need to work on, he helps and, and works in real sort of focus on them little bits and the parts of the game that... He knows that your strengths and that you're good at it's to keep working on them and get them even better um so i think it just for my all round game he, he's been great to develop that over the last few years yeah because earlier on in the season um after Oli gone Solskjaer got sacked there was a lot of noise surrounding him saying brendan's looking for a new house in manchester he's going to be leaving leicester <laughs> etc <Yeah. laughs> did he sort of like reassure the boys that listen i'm all in in this project i'm here to stay i want to be part of this long-term future yeah i think i think he did obviously it's difficult for him in that situation where it's all in the press and uh, obviously he knows that the lads would have all read that and there's all this speculation um, but he did yeah I think he made it clear to the lads that you know whilst he's at this club his full focus is with us and you know he wants to move forward with the project that we've got going on um, so you know I think as a, as a team it's, it's nice to it's nice to hear that and know that you know he's, he's with us for the, for the ride and how, how do you sum up your performance levels this season? Because last season, I think, would, I would say it was your breakthrough season. You were terrific. You were flying. And then I think you picked up a nasty injury towards the back end of, of the season, if I'm not mistaken. So how yeah. do you, like, sum up your season so far? Where do you think you can improve? What do you think you've done well? Yeah, I think it's probably been a bit of a difficult first half of the season for me. Um, Whereas, you know, like you say, last season was probably my, my real breakthrough season where Baller. I felt like I was in some really good form. Um, <laughs> and things were going, you know, really well. Every game I was going into, I felt like I was going to score or um, I was just enjoying my football. And then, well, of Harvey, course, is that is that something that like the manager was telling you to get in behind? Because I saw a lot of your goals were like literally running in behind and just, you know, finishing, literally. Like, is, is that something yeah, the manager yeah. told you to do more? Or? Yeah, I think, I think it was... It come from him. That's something that probably since he's come in, he's tried to help me as much as I can with not just, you know, with the ball. He probably saw that as one of my strengths is, you know, running with the ball. But, you know, he probably looked at my pace and thought in behind is where, you know, I've got to, got to work on and that's where I can get a lot more goals. And I think last year that sort of showed where, you know, I was getting a lot of goals running in behind. Mm. Um, and I think as an attacker, you've got to have that, that sort of mixture in your game where you can run in behind or, or have have the ball at your feet. Um, so that's, you know, when I say that he, he does it tactically with us, I think that, that for me is one of, been one of the main points where 
he's been you know onto me about that running behind running behind as a winger <laughs> you, you've got to do it and you, you get your goals there you look at the best the best wingers in the world that's how they get their goals yeah so talking about the best wingers in the world obviously in the Premier League we've got top players at Mane Salah we've got the players at Manchester City Raheem Sterling and players like that so do you sort of study their games to see how they get in you know goals and assists to benefit your game because potentially I see you as one of the top wingers in the Premier League yeah and of course I think you've got a I think for me you look at Salah this year and the sort of the numbers he's been putting up um, they're not all goals where he's obviously scored some great goals where he's dribbling and he's taking plays on and scored some unbelievable goals but you look at his running in behind and I think just probably his desire to score goals. Um, I think that's what the, the top attackers have. In a way, I think even though you're playing wide, you've got to sort of view yourself as just an attacker, as a as a striker when you're in and around the box. And I think he does that so well. And it's something you can you can only learn off. Um, like I said, the, the numbers he's putting up this year um, is stuff that you want to be creating. You, you want to recreate them them sort of figures and you can take bits out of his game. Um, it's only going to improve you as a player. And speaking of Liverpool, do you think that was almost like a big breakthrough for you guys? Because I think Liverpool were on a run of like 34 games where they've scored consecutively and, you know, you guys kept them quiet, clean sheet and won the game. Was like, how did, how did you guys react in the dressing room after getting that big win against Liverpool? Yeah, I, I think it... It was a big result for us. We obviously, it was the, the fixture where it's a day in between. And um, I think around that period is when we had a few few COVID cases. Um, so the, the squad was, you know, a, a little bit, you know, broken up. Um, and it's never easy, you know, th them fixtures around Christmas where you go 26, 28, it's so difficult. Probably, you know, not just for the players, but probably for the manager picking the team as well, because you've got to, sort of like, like you took an early player welfare you don't want to throw lads into a game two days later where they've got a chance of getting injured but you want your best team out and we went obviously man city liverpool so you can't really look at them games and think you can rest anyone <laughs> yeah. um it's difficult and i think liverpool ended up getting their game called off so they had the break we would straight into that game and the lads just dug in lads dug in deep and won the game um I think that they, they they probably weren't firing how they have been and Salah missed the penalty and we got a little bit of fortune in that sense. But as a team, we, we were just, we, yeah, we, we were top notch and the, the, they're the sort of performances where, you know, you, you sort of, you hopefully you look back at throughout the season. I think that was our, our turning point and hopefully you can go on a run after that. Yeah, so I think, as I said, I reckon you're a top, top player and you can play for England. Um, last season, there was a lot of speculation that you were in contention for the Euro squad. Do you have like regular conversations with Gareth Southgate to like see where your game is and how he views you in the England future? No, I, I, I haven't, to be honest. I think, um, I, know, I know he's obviously at a lot of games and I think, you know, as a player, obviously having, having a little taste of it um, in previous seasons, you sort of, in a way, know sort of if you're getting close to that or not by your performances with club. Um, I think, you know, obviously before I got injured last year, I felt like I was performing really well and I might have been in with a chance. Um, and then I think, you know, you sort of, you've come back from that. And I think, like I said earlier, this year's probably been a difficult one for me where you sort of, you come back from your injury and you're thinking, you know, everything's just going to drop straight back into place again. You're going to pick up where you left off and, you know, sometimes it's not as easy as that. Things take a little bit of time to sort of get back up to speed, your sharpness, and some things just aren't quite dropping. Um, but I, you know, I think for me, I've got. To, I'll always back myself. You know, if if I know that I can hit the form that I was hitting last year and keep progressing from that, keep getting my numbers up, um, you know, and hopefully I can do that this year. Then you sort of give yourself the best best chance to get back in that England set up, um, or at least push the idea. And talk to us about your colleague, James Madison, because for me, one of the best uh, attacking midfielders in the Premier League, what a player, and he's hit form at the right time. So how what does he do in training? Does he do like madnesses where he's just <laughs> ripping man and then just putting it in the top corner? What, how, how is he as a character? 
Yeah, no, he's great to run <laughs> the, the changing room and like you say, a trainer. I think a lot of his good traits are the you know in the tight little spaces, little turns and stuff. So in training, you know, it suits him. He's always doing them. He's always, he's always scoring great goals like like you've seen this season. And then I think this season, um, you know, he's really come into sort of the form that he that he had last season and. <laughs> You think he's showing now sort of the player that he can be. Um, and, you know, hopefully, you know, for us as a team, it's great to have him there. Um, he's only benefiting us and, and he's got some great, great goals and he's been creating a lot this season. Um, so it's great to play alongside as another attacking player. Um, you know, hopefully he can, he can keep it up for the rest of the season and, and keep pushing himself and us as a team. Yeah, you've got a great nucleus of like young players. You've got yourself, you've got Wilfred and Didi. James Madison, Wesley as Dot Fafana. said, Wesley Fofana, Tillisman, Dakar. Like, we normally see when you're doing well a lot of speculation. Like, we've seen stuff with you going potentially to, like, Liverpool. How important is it that Leicester City keep the nucleus of this squad together so that you can achieve great things? Yeah, I think it's been important. I think you've seen that over the last few years. Um, the young players that have all sort of come together... Um, I think we've got a great mix here. You know, we've got a lot of young, good players. We've we've still got a lot of more senior players in the squad who have been here for the history of the club and have won all the great things that, that the club have. Um, but like you say, the young players that we've got at the minute, I think it's such exciting times. Um, and you hope that, you know, the whole group can stay here for as long as they can and keep progressing each year. Because um, I think, you know, all the young players are only going to get better each year. Um but, you know, things happen in football, of course, they do. Someone someone may end up leaving. You may end up getting someone else through the door and, and bringing someone else in. So, um, for us, we've just got to enjoy it while we're all together, of course, and, you know, hopefully keep progressing and playing exciting football. So, like, what do you think sort of, like, the the limit for this Leicester team, if you're to keep everyone together? Like, how high can you go? Is it challenging for Champions League places? We've seen you win the FA Cup. Is it potentially winning the league I don't know in a few years time how how high do you see what's the cap for this project yeah I think us as a team I think this year's a difficult one when you see this, the strength of probably the Man City you look at and you think they are sort of the, in a way they're running away with it this year they look <laughs> they look sort of on a different level yeah. to everyone this year so it's it's tough when you look at that to go, you know, could we finish above them comfortably? It's difficult. But as sort of, I said, over the last few years, we've shown that when we're at the top of our game and, you know, we've obviously had a lot of injuries over the last few years, which have, which have hurt us. When we've got a fully fit squad and everyone's there, I think we can compete with most teams. Um, you know, you look at West Ham this year, what they're doing. Um, I think that's sort of been how we have the two previous seasons where I've been right in that top four the whole time and when you're in that momentum and in that good place as a team and you're winning games you, you go into every game thing, thinking you can win um, so I don't know it's difficult to, to say an exact target but we know that we can definitely push the, the top teams you know, I want to go off on a tangent and we're going to ask you probably a few more about on the pitch, but then we'll just round up with off the pitch. But I just, you know, I had a thought that come into my mind and I was talking about English talent in terms of how many top wingers are coming through in England. I think before it was like English players don't have the flair, the dribbling ability. It's all about physicality, aggression and all of those other stuff. But now we've got yourself. We've got Jaden Sancho. We've got Bakayo Saka. We've got... Jack Grealish, we've got James Madison, mm. we've got Smith Rowe, Smith Rowe <laughs> Gallagher, it's, it's, it's endless. Mm. What what has been the drastic difference in English football for all of you guys to come through, if you had to say something? Um, Sorry for I putting it on the spot. Maybe, <laughs> I, I don't know. Maybe it's just everyone being given the opportunity. I don't know. Um, I think... Sort of, especially, I think when I was in the, the England youth teams, um, I think at that around that time anyway, all the youth teams were doing so well at their age groups. You know, whether it was the 16s, 17s, 18s, you know, for, probably throughout the last six, seven, eight years, everyone seems to be winning at their age groups, you know, being sort of the top sides. Um, so whether it's just been, 
I don't know, the generation of all the young English talent coming through right in and around the same time. Um, and then, of course, you need that opportunity to play and, and showcase your ability. And when you're doing it in the Premier League, which you know is probably the best best league in the world, that's where you're judged at. And if you're you're doing well there and you're hitting the numbers there, you're going to get the recognition. Um, so it's, it's difficult that, that, like you said, there's so much talent, so much young talent. It's, mad. it's so exciting. You, you look throughout most teams in the league. There's there's young talent coming through, exciting talent, and you know it's, it's only good for the league. Yeah, when we had sort of Yannick Balassi on our podcast, he was speaking about the modern generation where it's sort of like attacking players prefer stats over performance. So like, if I was to pose you the question, like, okay, what would you rather do? Have a brilliant game, you work hard for the team, you get the win, but you're not on the score sheet or you don't register an assist, or you have, you know, average 90 minutes and you get a goal or assist, which one would you prefer? And you win. As long as you still win. Yeah. Okay, yeah. <laughs> you gave the right answer. Yeah. But it's true. It's like you say. Now it's if if you if you're at the game watching the game, then you may you may go, oh yeah, you know he's brilliant. He played great. He didn't score, but he was top level. But then for everybody else who wasn't at watching the game or whatever, may look at the whatever it's Sky Sports, whatever, and see, ah, oh, he's he scored again or whatever it is, watch match of the day and you see he scored again and it's, they both, I think they both matter, but like I think over the last few years, stats have become a massive thing. Um, when you're a newspaper, whatever it is, not a newspaper anymore, but it's all social media. It's, yeah. he scored awesome. again, he's got awesome. this many goals. <laughs> it's, it's all, you know, he scored again, he's got this many goals, he's this, comparing stats. So you, you have sort of got to base your game around that a little bit. And I, I think for, if you're a manager looking at it, if a player is going to get you a certain amount of goals each year, whatever it is, it's only going to benefit the team anyway. Yeah. So do you like set targets before a season? Like, okay, this season I want 10 goals, 10 assists or? Yeah. I, yeah. At the beginning of each season, I try to set myself, you know, some targets yeah, for the season. Yeah. Yeah, so like talking about your personal like short term goals. So like within the next two years or so, where would you like your game to be at? I think for me, I've just got to keep progressing from what I'm doing. I think for, first of all, I still need to. I'm get. I think since the injury, you know, I've definitely been getting there week on week. I feel like my game's definitely getting back to to where it was, but this it's still not you know, where I know it, it can get to at the minute. Um, so so what do you think that is? Is it um, form or is it fitness? Is it confidence or? It's probably just a, maybe a little bit of, a little bit of all of it combined, maybe. Um, mm. I think it, it's probably been difficult this year. It's been such a stop-start season. So it's been difficult to fight. Sometimes when you're not in form, you need just a run of games to get yourself back to where it was and, this year it's been difficult I've had I've had COVID twice where you, oh. you're then missing games or you know you're missing training for 10 days and then it takes a little while to get back up and then um, obviously games getting cancelled you know I missed the, the Christmas period where we had all the, the big games because of COVID um, so it's just all these probably little, little things and little breaks which normally in a, in a normal season you wouldn't have you know in yeah. Normally, unless you're injured, you're fit and available for every game. It's up to yourself. Um, but I think, you know, over, over sort of the last month or so, it's, I feel like I'm definitely getting back to the levels that I know I can get to. Um, and I think, you know, with seasons that will come in the next few years, like you said, um, I just know I need to keep progressing that and keep building on that. Stats is, like I said, <laughs> I, I think Got to keep getting as many goals keep and those numbers. And keep getting those double doubles. <laughs> you can do it. And as a player, listen, everyone loves scoring. So yeah. you want to score every game. Of course you do. So for me, it's you know you want to score as many goals as you can. And and with Leicester, you want to progress as a team as much as you can and go on to hopefully win more silverware. And I think last one um, on the pitch in terms of um, 
currently at Leicester. Like, what what do you want to say to the Leicester fans? Because they support you through thick and thin. There's COVID, but they still pack out the King Power Stadium. Away days, they're travelling to Manchester, Liverpool, going to those big away games. So what is your message to the Leicester fans? Yeah, no, they've been unbelievable over the last few seasons, you know, especially since since I've really sort of come into the first team and I've seen sort of them week in, week out. I think that's when you appreciate um, sort of how, how good they are. Um, it's like you say, through through the thick and thin parts, um, sort of the players feel the disappointment over the last two years of missing out on the on the Champions League, but you've got to also understand the fans do as well. Um, they're desperate for the for the players to get it. Um, so, you know, you know, they've had, I think everyone always looks at Leicester such a, a roller coaster club. We have <laughs> such highs um, yeah. at the club. And then sometimes we'll, we'll, we'll have such low moments and they're all, they always stick by us through that. So, you know, the, the players always appreciate that and, and we know how much they, they mean to the club. Yeah, so talking about outside of the pitch, we speak to a lot of players, they've got different interests. Some might be gaming, property, fashion, things like that. So where do your interests lie outside of football? Um, Hobbies-wise, I like to get on the golf course a little bit. Okay, Come yeah. I'm not, I'm not, who's I'm the not be- who's the best at Leicester? Who's the best at Leicester? Who's the best? Be- do you know what? I always say this, we don't actually have like a top golfer. Normally at a goal, uh, sorry, at a football club, you have like a Something really, else. really good golfer. At Leicester, we have lads who, we have a good group who play actually. Madders plays, Kiernan plays. What about senior man? Senior man? <laughs> senior man's not, not getting involved. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I don't think he's a golfer. Um, but yeah, I enjoy I enjoy golf. Not now, it's too cold now, but mm. in the summer. Um, it's good. It's good to sort of, when you come away from football, to sort of have a few hours on the golf course, switch off. What about your fashion? Are you into your fashion? You know, into the latest drip or yeah, just keep I it am, simple? But not like nothing mad. N- so who's the maddest at the club? Then? Maddest. Is it maddest? <laughs> <laughs> some some of it's some of it's like norm. Like some of it's good, mm. and then some of it's mad sometimes. Some of it's mad. <laughs> okay. But like Wilf sometimes wears some some mad stuff. Some of the lads have come in with some questionable outfits, but. You just sort of had a blind eye, pretend you don't see it. <laughs> I think the last one from me, Harvey, before you let you go, is how do you actually deal with the fame? Because you now go into the city centre and everyone knows you in Leicester. Oh, shit, that's Harvey Barnes. Raw. Like, mm. h- how do you deal with that as a, as a young player? Yeah, no, I think it's, uh, it's like, like you say, I think probably being... Probably being a Leicester lad, you get it a little bit more because you're from the city. Um, so yeah, people will probably maybe not more recognisable. They probably feel like they can come up and approach you more. Which you know, I, I think over the last few years, you sort of you learn to deal with it yourself. There's not like there's not a lesson on how to deal with these sort of situations. It's just each each person will deal with it differently. Personally, I I don't mind it. I think. You know, if someone wants to come up and, and have a little chat or a picture, or whatever it is, then, you know, as a player, that's just something that you, you sort of have to deal with. Um, of course, sometimes it's it's never, it's not the most convenient time. If you're, say you're out with the family for a meal or whatever it is, sometimes you just want to, you know, chill out and not be disturbed. But then you've also got to understand that as a player, you know, if, you know, you're in their position or, you know, for me, if I saw someone that you idolised or whatever, then you'd sort of think that's my opportunity to go and speak to them or go and get a picture. Um, so you've got to understand from different perspectives. But I don't think that, I can't imagine anyway, there'll be many players that would, you know, be massively rude or turn that down. I think it's just something that as players, you sort of, you learn to deal with and it's part of it. No, that's a perfect way yeah. to wrap up. It's, it's been a pleasure mm. catching up with you. Thank you very much for giving us your time, you know, after training, staying behind to speak to us all. We really appreciate it. That's all right. No worries. Thank you. Thank you, Thank Harvey. You. Really appreciate it. So, so that's an ep- another episode of the Beautiful Game podcast. We're going to leave it there. Please like and subscribe to the YouTube channel, which is the Beautiful Game podcast. Leave a comment if you enjoyed the episode. 
Also, um, follow our socials, which is at podcast underscore TBG on Twitter and at pod underscore TBG on Instagram. And we will see you soon. Peace. Oh,